God, please allow your Holy Ghost to speak through me, ask in your name, and for your sake, amen. It's a sad commentary where we live in a generation where people will believe anything, they'll embrace anything. They seem to be the most relativistic bunch on the face of the earth today, as opposed to past times. They're always in your face constantly with blasphemies and with taking the Lord's name in vain. They've become desensitized overall today. I mean, we live in an insane society where there's no fear of God anymore. People, they're not afraid of God. I mean, folks use the, the word hell just randomly. Folks use the word hell. The word hell has no punch anymore when they use it. They just use it as a slang. It's a part of figure of speech or something. They don't understand what he means. This is important what I'm saying to you. You're not going to hear this from a lot of preachers, I'm afraid. The Bible's not changed. The Bible doesn't have to prove anything. The Bible is the truth. The Word of God is the truth. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the preachers don't preach on hell anymore. It doesn't matter if the Bible schools don't teach on hell anymore. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that Jesus Christ preached on hell more than anyone else in the Bible, more than Peter or Paul or anyone else. You know, in this day and time, this relativistic day and time, it's not popular to take everything that Jesus Christ taught and preach on it anymore. But Jesus is the one who used the words hell fire. He talked about hell as being a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, a furnace of fire. And gnashing of teeth is when you grind your teeth because you're in so much pain. You're in unbelievable pain. I hope you're listening to what I'm saying. Because hell is a real place. You don't want to go there. In the Bible, it makes declarations. It makes definitive statements. It declares things to be true. You can believe the Bible or you can reject the Bible. But that doesn't change the fact that the Bible is true. When Jesus showed up 2,000 years ago as a lowly Galilean, as a carpenter, he preached about hell. He preached about it being a place If you're smart, you only have half intelligence, you're going to be thinking about what's going to happen when you leave this. You're going to be thinking about what's going to happen when you leave the world one day, when you die. Because everybody's going to die. You'd be thinking, you should be thinking about where is your soul going? If you've got common sense, you should be thinking about the one day you're going to die. Let me think about where's my soul going? Where's your soul going after you die? You should be thinking, are you prepared? It doesn't matter, again, if the churches today have stopped preaching on hell. It doesn't matter if the churches today have stopped preaching on hell. It doesn't matter that the Bible colleges don't teach on hell. It doesn't matter. Hell is still a place that you're going to have to deal with one day. If somebody, my friend, died today and went to hell. If you don't listen to anything else, which you should listen to what I'm saying, what the Holy Ghost is saying through me, but listen to this. When you die without Jesus Christ, you go to hell. Hell is a place therefore that awaits you. Hell is a place therefore that awaits you at the end of your life if you reject Jesus Christ. Hell has plenty of patience. It doesn't care if you live 150 years. It's waiting. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
if you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. It's very patient. It can wait. It doesn't matter how big you are on this earth, how popular you are, how famous you are, how rich you are. If you die without Jesus Christ, if you reject, if you die without Jesus Christ, if you reject Jesus Christ, you'll end up in hell. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago and died a horrible death on the cross. The crucifixion is a horrible death. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years and died on the cross and rose from the dead. He died to keep you out of hell. What preacher, what preacher must I do to stay out of hell? So you probably, hopefully you're asking, what preacher must I do to stay out of hell? What must I do, the Philippian jailer said to Paul and Silas, to be saved? What must I do? And Paul answered him, and Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So if you'll just confess your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you and come to Him and be sincere and ask Him to be your Lord and Savior, you won't go to hell. Because, because Jesus Christ says, If any man comes to me, meaning Him, I will in no wise cast him out. Think about Luke 16, 23, the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And when the rich man died, he lifted up his eyes in hell. He lifted up his eyes in hell. That means hell is a real place. He became conscious that he was in hell. After he was died and was buried, he became conscious when he woke up that he was in hell. A place of eternal torture and torment for rejecting God. Jesus says in Mark 9.43, And if thy hand defend thee, cut it off. It is better off for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. So Jesus describes hell as a place, a real place. You don't want to go there. Who goes to hell? People who reject Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ rejectors all go to hell. Don't be one that goes to hell. I hope something I said helps someone ask in your name, Jesus, and for your sake, amen. Many is a chore. 
I've seen it all before. I've seen it all before. The way, the truth, and the lies. Only happiness is through Jesus Christ. I've seen it all before. I've seen it all before. The way, the truth, and the life only comes through Christ. Run my pharmacy a plane, dream of flying away. Pilots look upon my farm, dreams of home with all this charm. Celebrity and fame, see, I do. Living a life was so 